I'm Mary Louise Garrick. This is me several years ago, just after we moved to Colorado. I started to meet the local SACWA members. The next thing I knew, I was on my way to being SACWA regional co-rep for Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming with Ann Severn. We put together the regional exhibit, Evolving Perception, and facilitated some local connections group that are still active. After four years, I joined the education committee interested in the SACWA seminar. I ended up coordinating the 2021 seminar, Color. In October 2021, I had a brain bleed and subdural hematoma. I contacted Dolores Miller and let her know I needed to quit the planning for the 2022 seminar. The committee closed ranks. The seminar planning continued with June Robertson leading the way. A few days later, my bleed extended and I almost died. At 2 a.m. on Halloween, Jim got the call that I may not make it till morning. In his wonderful, amazing, smart-ass way, he told the doc that it was already morning. The doc answered, that's why I'm calling now. A few days later, I started to wake up, unable to move my right side. With time, my hand and leg did start to move. Hospital gear is not haute couture, especially after a craniotomy, nor are the neurosurgeons great hairdressers. But with all the time in bed, exercising my hands, I just wanted to get back to sewing. I cried in despair, clung to Jim, and worked to get out of bed with the help of the nurses and therapists. Meanwhile at home, my sewing machines were sitting unused as my hand shook and my brain was unable to put things together. I got cards from family, friends, including many friends and idols from Sakwa, offering me encouragement and healing. They blew me away and gave me the energy to keep on working. It was a slow process getting my muscles and coordination back. I had to return to the anticoagulants required for my artificial heart valve, facing my fear that without them, I could get a clot and die. With them, have another bleed and die. I had no alternative but walking that tightrope and still don't. December 10th, I walked out after 53 days in acute care and rehab, a free if not completely stable woman. I learned from some SACWA members, there is never enough embellishment. I continued outpatient rehab and tried sewing at home. A major mistake, needles and shaking hands are sharp. I made postcards to thank the rehab therapist for freeing me from a walker, working on balance, and teaching me to write again. I got back into the thread painting with the small pieces and left perfectionism in the dust. Having my work supported on a table allowed me to stabilize my hands and have smoother control of my work. I started cutting apart a finished quilt, remembering suggestions from the New Mexico critique group, my second region. I needed less black between the wedges. I was proud that I remembered their suggestion in February, and it worked enhancing the design. Prior to the stroke, our experimental SACWA peer mentoring group from Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming started the first challenge due in October. It was about the time I was seriously crashing, so I did not meet the deadline. The gals were very supportive. Again, I was not left alone by SACWA. Sewing again, I started the second challenge. From my stash, I found fabrics that would work with a little paint and thread. But what about the leaves? Thank you, Betty Busby and Jane Dunawald. You inspired my fabric and color choices, experimentation with nonwoven fabrics and paint, and encouraged me to play. I painted the fabric and cut the leaves, then used dissolving stabilizers, stitched the markings, and sewed them in place. I was able to work through the process and got the result I wanted. Major accomplishment. And I completed it a month before the due date. Meanwhile, I was painting and cutting lily pads for another piece. Again, used unfamiliar technique and worked hard to capture the light on the lily pads. With advice from my Northern Colorado critique group, started by SACWA members, I am still working on the lilies. I started working on the Q20 in June. I only spent up to an hour working in the studio with limited tolerance for noise and stress. Over time, I worked on building my stamina. However, thinking about design and techniques generally happened when I woke up in, from my afternoon nap.
I returned to the first peer challenge, not liking my original attempt. I tried learning from my mistake. I created a seascape from my mind's eye with free motion quilting. Again, I found myself using materials and techniques from sock role models and idols. I had two meetings with my Sakwa mentor prior to my stroke to help me find my own point of view. In our second meeting, we reviewed my homework to identify pictures that inspired me. My mentor told me that I had a style in my pictures that tell a story. The pictures originally from the Galapagos to Morocco to Turkey to Patagonia to my own backyard. Becoming a juried artist has been a long-time goal, encouraged by the friends I met through Sakwa. Working on it. Having your life change with a stroke is frightening. Having goals make recovery possible. And having encouragement from family, friends, and mentors who understand the necessity to create art with fiber and textiles is priceless. So I want to thank everyone in Sakwa, the staff, the board, the volunteers, regional friends, and other members for sharing their hearts, caring, and creativity. You made this journey less lonely, less desperate, and full of love and joy, and a definite pathway to possibilities. Thank you.